Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite products that I recently purchased as well as sharing some of my regrets. So the first item that was a pleasant surprise are these Art Whale paints. If you're new to my channel, hello, I'm Stephanie and I'm addicted to art supplies. I always am curious if the budget sets work um, because I don't want to leave anybody out because they don't have the money to buy the expensive products. So I'm always super curious to try the budget friendly ones. They, I purchased these for $26 on Amazon during Black Friday. I'm not sure what they are currently. But um, see the labels don't stay on and that I'm a little OCD so yeah that bothered me right away. <laughs> and I remember thinking okay these are probably going to be um, donated. I worked with special needs children, so any of my extra supplies, I donate to them. They are always needing supplies. So, but I had a lovely viewer that said you were pleasantly surprised by them. These probably would have sat for a few months before I tried them, honestly, if you wouldn't have left me that comment. So thank you so much. They list the pigment information. I haven't seen anything that makes it look like they're lying about the pigment information yet. So that's really good. I swatched these out and they're really lovely colors. And then I did some uh, mixing and you can see that the yellow is pretty opaque, but these are much less opaque than say like the artsy or whatever they're called now. Um, that I'm not really a fan of. These aren't too bad. Look at, I mean, the ultramarine blue has a little bit, but it's really not bad. So I went ahead and did do some testing and I put them in a palette and let them dry out for the week. And the only one I had problem with is the cerulean blue that my it, I don't know. I'm not going to return it, but the cerulean blue, I could hardly get any out. It's, that one was bad. It's not really cerulean blue anyway. I'm pretty sure it was a phthalo blue. Yeah, it's just a phthalo blue with white. You know, one tube out of all of these not being good for the price, uh, I will deal with. But um, yeah, it's like hard in there and Maybe the white they use is too hard, but it's like a brick. Like, you can't get any out. <laughs> uh, so that one was bad. Also, one of them, the yellow-green, I had a hard time getting that, uh, the lid back on. The threading didn't want to line up for a minute. Uh, but I just pushed it down hard, and that made it work. But yeah, for almost a dollar a piece, I was very pleasantly surprised and I like how they dry and they're still staying in the pans. They're not cracking too bad. Thank you again to the viewer who made that comment. And then that leads me to my first regret. I purchased this, um, I think it was early this summer and uh, as Amazon had recommended it, but in the photo, the palette looked like it was a deeper lavender and it's almost white and i had purchased it because i wanted mostly the pretty tin to put at the time my roman schmall paints and then um these are very similar to the artsy or superior or tin i think it's tinge there's lots of names they seem to uh repackage them i didn't i never had swatched these out i wanted them for the tin and honestly, I didn't really like the color. I kept these for all these time, but I had never taken the stickers off. I think I peeked at one and they looked very much like the artsy paints. Those aren't my favorites. Uh, I think they're fine if you're a very, very beginner and you don't care that they're pretty opaque, but for me, they're no. So excited thinking, oh, well maybe these paints are better than, you know, maybe I was wrong about these paints too. And I went and took all the stickers off and swatched them and nope, I was right. <laughs> they're, they're a pass. Uh, they're much more opaque. Look at even the reds, um, <laughs> uh, they're much more opaque. Um, and this looks kind of pretty now, but when I first did those mixes, that wasn't even very pretty. Also, the neutrals were very, very weak. I might give these to my daughter to use for hand lettering and that kind of thing. And then when she's done, then I can pour my tubes into these. So yeah, I was, I was less impressed with these. And 
Um, I think if you have these, it, I mean, they have some pretty colors. They're just, they're more opaque. And there's, to me, there's a lot better paints on the market than these. And they didn't make this a deep enough color to make it pretty. Uh, the White Knights Lavender is way prettier to me. Just wanted to let you know about that. Next item that has been a favorite is definitely this Jarlink pencil sharpener. Uh, Jarlink did send me this, but I'm, I'm, you'll know, you'll see in a minute, I'm keeping it very real with you guys. This pencil sharpener is super powerful. I've collected lots of colored pencils that I wasn't fully using. I would pull out my favorites and I would hand sharpen them, but I have three kids and I don't have time to hand sharpen, you know, the full sets and I have full set syndrome. So of course I have the whole sets of everything to find my favorite colors. And so I was using my favorite colors, but it wasn't sharpening the whole sets. And so because I love this pencil sharpener, it's not, it's not perfect. It's almost perfect. And it has a really, um, <laughs> it has a really easy to remove receptacle. Another thing I need because I can be lazy and if it's a pain in the butt to, to remove that, then I'm not going to do it. The only thing really bad is that about half of my pencils won't fit because this only fits up to eight milliliters. A lot of my favorite pencils won't fit in this. Otherwise it'd be perfect because it is very powerful. Uh, but any of the larger European, like the Luminance don't fit, the um, Caran d'Ache don't fit, any of the larger pencils don't fit. Somebody had asked if it eats the pencil. It will, it has no auto stop, which I'm, I'm really okay with. It takes one second, but it has made it so much easier to sharpen all of my pencils because it's so fast, so powerful. Um, as I mentioned in the other review, um, I have the Athmat, but the, and this works well. It just doesn't feel near powerful that I felt like it could handle 120 pencils, if that makes sense. It works beautifully, and this does does up to six to 12 milliliters. And this one has auto stop. Anyway, I had a really bad sharpener before that was terrible, and so it scared me away from using electric sharpeners. And um, as I mentioned in that review, it was horrid and it made me think I had to hand sharpen. It made all my pencils look like this. So this one is super powerful and as long as they fit, it sharpens them in one second. So if you pull them in, if you put them in, I mean literally one second or less, they're sharp, they're beautiful, and I can finally use all of my pencils. I went and bought uh, this pencil sharpener and this is the top loading and I didn't even pay attention to the size and I should have but this one I I shouldn't have purchased this. This is even less powerful. Um, the polychromos fit and it works okay. I bought this because it said it's rechargeable. It's not as easy to open. You have to line up these really easy. Okay, if I'm just being perfectly honest, it's kind of a pain in the butt. There we go. I was less impressed with this. It's not awful if you have it. I mean, it works. I just feel like the Aftmat is um, superior to this. So this will be going to my son. I sacrificed way too many of my ugly chromium oxide pencils, and but I'm not doing another review. So this one, I, I did purchase this one. I'm gonna try this one. While I want to be the color pencil user that hand sharpens all of my pretty pencils, uh, I, I'm never going back. I'm never going back. So satisfying to have it perfectly sharpened in one second, so I, I'll never go back. This is an electric racer. Uh, from Afmat and I picked this up because it was on Black Friday, you know, thought what the heck it's Black Friday I'll try it. Uh, I thought I would use it for highlights. It's it has a lid that comes on and off I've been using it since uh, I purchased it and You just push this little button and it's an electronic eraser I had no idea what I was missing out on. I thought oh, I'll use it for highlights every now and then I really didn't see you know, the, the use, which was really foolish of me because it has been a complete game changer for me for drawing. <laughs> um, so I, it has made, 
it has made me um, <laughs> it has made me start drawing because it makes it so easy to go and erase and like I'll do some shading and if I do too much it just erases it so quick and easy I've been using this since I purchased it I've never had to recharge it yet I have had to um, put up pull up the eraser and this is all I have now it's almost time to get a refill but it's very easy to take out I started sketching um, our Christmas tree and I want to do the shading I just feel like I don't have time to deal with all my mistakes. So I will still be using my Faber-Castell to, um, to just lighten my lines before I decide to watercolor anything. But it has made me, um, yeah, it's, it's made me want to draw. And that was my goal for next year is to draw a lot more. Most artists probably already have one. I really doubt this is any different than Derwent. If you're like me and didn't think you needed an electric eraser, you might consider it. <laughs> Next is definitely my Schminka Black Friday sale from Jackson's. This leather pouch is so gorgeous. I still love it and I've been using it. This is much softer and more pliable than the old purchased a previous year like I did. This uh, palette I've been painting with, do my proper swatches yet. I've been using this just as it is. I haven't added 12 more half pans and I'm gonna just leave it like this and use all of these just to mix with just this. And I've never done that because I always felt like, oh no, I've got the space, I've gotta go add 12 more. I'm going to use this as a limited palette as, and that's my goal this year too, is to use more limited palettes uh, the way they come, which I've never, I've never done in the history since I loved watercolors. I've always changed everything around and changed the colors and added as many colors as I can. So I painted my first landscape with those paints and I didn't think I would like doing landscapes, but now what can I say? I'm, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be and I, I made lots of mistakes, but I learned something and that's what I love about using sketchbooks and playing with watercolors. You can make mistakes and you can learn and then you'll do it better next time. So, but yeah, I didn't think I would like landscapes, but I used that palette and I created this. Add some white and gold gouache. So my next favorite is this palette. I waited way too long to use this. I purchased this last March. I think I was waiting to find my perfect colors to put in there and use all the time. I love painting on ceramic. That's definitely my favorite. Uh, I have this on a Lazy Susan, which is what I've done now. I've shared that in other videos, I'm sure, because uh, I've been doing that forever. But having this size, it still fits on my desk. I can still use it and I can still have room for everything else because I'm on a small, I have a small little round table is what I'm working on loved pouring these uh, super granulating colors in here as long as well as some other mixing colors and i absolutely loved it i've loved using the super granulating colors i've already filled them most of them up twice uh, the only two colors i have not used are the tundra orange and surprisingly the glacier glacier green <laughs> which is a surprise because i really love the color and i love it's just a uh, cobalt teal and potter's pink which is one of my favorite mixes but I find myself I love the color but I can't find myself finding a use of that color if that makes sense like I don't know what to use that color for in my painting so far so uh, but I love the mixing and I will mix it for fun all the time <laughs> but uh, as far as having it I have not needed to refill that so go figure um, but yeah, I have loved, I've loved using this palette. I loved putting the plate on top because it then protects, I have a yellow lab and holy cow, she's shedding, she sheds all the time. And so I feel like the plate protects it a little bit. Um, yeah, if this would have had a lid, it would be five stars for me, but because it doesn't have a lid, I think that's one of the reasons I waited to use it. Honestly, I've just been putting a towel over it to keep more dog hair off. 
I've been loving painting in this palette. Absolutely loving the full pans. You can um, you can purchase full pans, even Schmincke uh, from Dick Blick, to fill your own pans. But yeah, I love that I'll be able to change my mind. And so I might start filling full pans from now on because I love that so much. And it, it really makes mixing a joy and I don't worry about uh, ruining any of my brushes. And it also made me be able to use this number 12 brush and fall in love with this brush because um, I don't have to worry about root. It just, you can reach it so well. Uh, really made me enjoy using this. I was always afraid I would ruin it going into little half pans and might have worried about it for nothing, but I've really been loving this palette. And I went ahead and I painted this to uh, for the palette. I painted this little color swatch. Used the the ruler all the time and but this is the first time I was able to use this you can stick your pencil in and then go ahead and just um, slide this over and then that allows you to go ahead and the zeros here so and then you can put different lines and so I was able to make this kind of little color swatch for that palette uh, which is very helpful and I probably need to go put the names down at some point but I don't know I might leave it like this <laughs> it's very I think it's pretty just the way it is using that palette made me finally start using these super granulating colors and I love them they're essentially convenient mixes neat you can make your own Kim Crick has a really good video on that but I had already purchased all mine but I'm totally okay with convenient mixes as they're a lot of fun especially when they're gorgeous so these are the swatches and so since I started playing with that I I was painting these ornaments with a youtuber named Nia and I'll link her channel below I watched her tutorial and I painted along with her and I loved it and I always need kind of a prompt I can't think of what to draw or what to paint because I always seem to want to do a masterpiece or nothing and I need to like get over that <laughs> It really keeps me from um, creating very much. So I painted these ornaments with her and it was so fun and I loved every minute of it. But that, and then that made me decide I could just go and paint my own ornaments and use the super granulating colors. That's what I did. I went and I drew all these out. I just drew the ornaments and then um, I tried to get them all the same size, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't quite do it. Yeah, I painted these and then I used the super granulating colors on all the inside uh, paintings. I wanted to paint the Christmas star. So I finally tried my Schmincke Rich Gold, which I think I've had this for like a year and I didn't ever grab it. And it's lovely. Um, you can see the inside. I just painted inside. You just use water with it and it's just basically loose, loose pigment. And I added water and it is the perfect, it was the perfect gold color to me. And it was really nice to outline those. The problem is I didn't know when to stop and so I kind of ruined especially that one. I tried to use it with a stencil that did not work at all. I <laughs> do not recommend that. Um, but sadly, I kind of didn't know where to stop and almost all of these looked way better before I added all the gold. So I need to practice a little more restraint, but I do that a lot. I just, I kind of want to test and see what else I can do and experiment and that's part of the fun. But a lot of times I ruin it. And even the, like this one, it looks so much better before I have the gold and the white even. Um, it was fine. I should have just left it. The gold doesn't come off. I just used it with water and yeah, so those were really fun to make and I wouldn't have made these if I wouldn't have um, painted that picture with Nia. So it was fun to do that. My next favorite when I was digging in the garage for those Art Whale uh, half pan set, I found this book that I purchased uh, sometime when we lived in North Carolina. So it's been probably two years ago. <laughs> I don't know if I ever shared it, but it has, uh, I totally forgot I even had it, and it has some really lovely drawings, and I cannot wait to use it later. 
Uh, right now, I'm going to be painting this poinsettia, and it's a very easy thing to draw, but seeing it all drawn out makes it makes it seem like it's easier to see the actual shapes. Uh, but I also love having the photograph because I could draw from I could try drawing from hers as well as the photograph. Of course, my favorite is the peony back at the back. So this is my favorite. She also shows some tips on color pencil coloring. I love that she has the actual flowers in there. And so that's gonna help me a lot when I need an idea of what to draw and what to paint. So I'm looking forward to doing this one next. And then this is gonna be great because I will be using this. After Christmas and New Year's, I go straight to florals. And so I can't wait to use this book and my Schmincke floral set um, because I plan on doing the same exact thing I can't wait to um, play and make mixes and see what mixes I can get. And I plan to use this just with these 12 half pans and not add all of my other favorite colors. I'm gonna try that and see, see how I like it. <laughs> um, it's kind of gonna be a little challenge to myself because I almost always wanna go in and put more of my favorite colors and maximize the use of this tin. But I'm going to try to not do that and just paint with the colors that were included with this palette. So I can't wait to use this book um, with that, uh, with my Schmincke floral palette. Lastly, I was sent, uh, I was sent these paints by Upgray, which are some student grade watercolors. And I was actually pleasantly surprised. I think they're better than the artsy paints. And they were kind enough to send these to me as long as a giveaway. And Cosmo Queen was the winner of that uh, giveaway. I loved that these had the metallics. I thought they were a lot of fun. And they were really nice and I could have a lot of fun with those. And so I had painted this with those. And then they had also sent me some paper. I really was even more pleasantly surprised by this paper. Uh, these are the colors that I had swatched. And one of, the, one of my viewers had noticed and asked which paper I used. This is the paper that I used. I used this up gray paper. It is, um, it is their expert. I'll link it below. And they did tell me they do offer coupons at times and things like that. But you get, it's acid free and cold press and it says it's for watercolor, oil paint and acrylic. You get 35 sheets that 140 pounds. This is the nine by 12 size. And these came in a pack of two. I really like this paper and look all I've used. So I went ahead and ordered more with my own money and uh, happily <laughs> would do that because this, I think this paper is gonna be my new practice paper. I'm still gonna compare it to some other brands, but I already know I love it way more than Canson. Uh, I will save Canson for color pencils now because you see the texture that you get. So that makes this, um, the granulation come out really nice. And so this is the up gray paper and this is arches. So if you can see the difference um, now I did add, I did add more water when I was swatching them because I was trying to get all the granulation to come out, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, I really, this paper, I used to love B paper and then they changed it. So I hope they don't change this. So please always look at the description box because if by chance they've changed it, then I will put a note in my description box. I did notice somebody in the reviews has said that this isn't paper that you want to like wet and stretch and all that. I wouldn't, this isn't 100% cotton paper. I wouldn't think you could do that. This is perfect for practicing and swatching and uh, which I really need because arches is expensive. I can use this paper and I can experiment. I can have fun and I cannot be so worried about wasting my good paper. I have already purchased it and received uh, two new pads and I think I paid $18.99 for two packs of 35 sheets. So that made it more affordable than Canson. So I'm not sure the price now. This is definitely one of my favorites. So I really thank Upgrade for sending me that. They add a 100% cotton paper to their line and I can't wait to try more of their products. Anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys. And oh, and I, if you are a fountain pen user, 
Um, I've been loving this calendar from Diamine. And that's another thing I did is I went and used this, um, used this upgrade paper and I was swatching out my uh, swatches because look at the f cool effects you can get on watercolor paper. And I was uh, inspired to do this by an artist uh, from the UK named Nick Stewart. He does a lot of uh, ink, like ink work, uh, artwork, and he experiments with watercolor paper and water and the, the fountain pen inks, as well as he adds bleach. But look at the cool, you're able to see all the the shimmer and the sheening. Look, Garland and the Winter Spice are definitely my favorite so far. I just like, can I pre-order those now? <laughs> um, so cool. So I can't wait to try more of the um, Stargazer is pretty cool too. That's coming off. But yeah, I loved um, playing with them on this paper. What I wind up doing is swatching it both on Tomoe River paper so you get two different, you get different looks on different paper. And so um, there's Diamine, Diamine Tempest, which is day four. And yeah, really cool. So that's it for my favorites. I hope you enjoyed this. So I would love to know if you guys have any favorite products you've been using this month. And if you have any regrets, I'd love to know your regrets just as well. Uh, let's just help save each other. <laughs> Uh, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season, no matter where you are in the world. And thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.